Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Talos of Tech Live on YouTube. This is going to be a weird one. I'm warning you right now. Um, it's kind of a long story, uh, but I thought it would be fun to do live. Uh, at least the channel members thought it would be fun to do live uh, because, of course, we ugh, there's, uh, there's so many different avenues I can explain this from. Um, there will be an unboxing in a few minutes. Okay, we're going to be unboxing a phone that is technically not out. No, it's not an iPhone, of course. <laughs> no one has iPhone 15, not even Apple. Um, but I thought this would be kind of a fun one to unpackage with you live because it's from a phone brand I've never uh, checked out before. I never really even heard of. Um, but before I stripped my, uh, my contact information from this YouTube channel, uh, this brand in particular, I counted this morning uh, my, my previous inbox before I changed email addresses. Uh, this manufacturer emailed me 34 times trying to get me to unbox one of their products. <laughs> and because it's an Android, obviously, I was I was kind of done with Androids ever since uh, 2020. I'll reveal which phone it is in a minute. I'm just giving time for everybody to show up, and I just want to provide a little bit of context because I know most of your reaction once I start unboxing this is going to be, what the heck is that? Why did you get that? <laughs> so this was sent to me. I did not buy it uh, for the record, but um, they emailed me 34 times, and because I kind of took a break on reviewing Android phones, um, I didn't respond to them or I told them, no, thank you. I'm not interested because I was like, I'm mostly an Apple channel and I don't really talk about Android phones that much. But I thought in all fairness, because uh, I ran a poll and asked the audience because I've been doubtful of a lot more Apple leaks lately and I don't want to talk too much about leaks and rumors anymore because I feel like they're all wrong half the time or more than half the time and uh, no one really knows what anyone's talking about. So I'm trying to find a new direction for this channel to go in and that's part of the reason I ended up reviewing, um, well I'm not done reviewing, but checking out the Pixel 6a is because I've, I've kind of leaned more towards the budget focused market of like let's see um, how affordable phones can get, especially if you're comfortable going secondhand or refurbished or renewed. Um, so the Pixel 6a, I got renewed for 200 and uh, I do plan on doing a, a full review later in the week or maybe next week um, now that my, my schedule's been rearranged and stuff. Uh, but I wanted to dive into more budget-focused uh, Android phones because there's only so many old iPhones I can talk about. I've done iPhone 10, I've done iPhone SE. Now um, I'll be using the iPhone SE to help with the unboxing. Um, over here, I think I've got the multicam set up. Yeah, there we go. Spoiler review. Yep, someone got it right. <laughs> um, but this is, it's, it's, I think Saren got it right, but they spelled it wrong. Um, so this one is technically new, it's not second hand, but it's very different in my opinion from most other phones on the market, which is why it'd be kind of interesting to check out because I have no preconceived uh, conception with these. This is not sponsored. I did not sign any contracts. That's my deal when companies want me to review something. I say I'm never going to sign a contract. I will not stick to a script. I will not stick to an embargo. Um, but they did send uh, a phone that is not out yet. You can pre-order it on their website, um, but I'm not recommending it yet because I don't know if it's any good. Um, my first impressions from the pictures on the site is that it looks kind of ugly, but I'm already using ugly phones in my opinion, <laughs> like the iPhone SE. Um, beautiful from the back, but big bezels on the front. So I'm like, well, okay, if I'm comfortable... The, a lot of my motivation from switching from the iPhone 10 to the SE2 was I want to use my phone more as a tool, not so much as an entertainment device. So I'm looking for ways of more affordable phones that can be used more as tools. And it, to me, it feels like that's what... Um, how do you pronounce this? Doji? <laughs> We've got the box right here. Um, Doji is trying to make phones that are more tool focused, not so much beauty focused. Um, because clearly they're very ugly. <laughs> you don't have to remind me of that. Um, this is not going to be a beautiful phone to look at. Um, but they're trying to make, you can tell already from the box, this is very heavy. Um, but they're trying to make it more rugged, more durable, um, more outdoor friendly. And some of the specs, at least on paper, are quite shocking. But um, I think the marketing from this brand is quite hilarious because clearly they don't speak um, much English. 
Uh, I've seen listings where they, they have typos in the marketing images and stuff. Um, so I'm wondering if that's how the marketing is, how bad is the software? And I believe part of the, uh, the compromise involved with this phone, um, is that it's only available with T-Mobile. I'm not even sure if it works with Mint Mobile, but most people are saying, no, it's not the first product. I did some research on this because I, I was worried I was getting scammed. <laughs> so I looked up Doji as a company. I was like, is this a legit company? Are they really making phones? Like, what's going on? And they were founded in 2013. They're a Chinese-based brand, like most Android smartphones are. <laughs> um, but... I've, I've never tried one. I've never seen one. I've never looked at one. This is like completely new uncharted territory for me. But okay, uh, before we get started here, as more people are, are coming in, um, what I wanted to explain was once I started checking out the Pixel, and I was like, okay, I'm checking out Android phones again, and I want to review more budget-focused Android phones on the channel because I feel like, yeah, we'll have lots to talk about at Dub Dub. But the Apple leaks and rumors aren't enough to keep this channel afloat anymore. There's just not enough to talk about. Can't wait to see how durable the phone is. Thank you, Caleb. Um, I appreciate four months of support. Wow. And because of that, I was like, uh, I, I kept getting emails from this brand. They had emailed me over 30 times um, over the past year to say, hey, please check this out. Please check this out. And I just kept saying, sorry, I'm not an Android guy. Um, I just talk about Apple stuff. But here we are, and um, so I, I wanted to make their expectations very clear. I was like, just because you send me a phone, that doesn't mean I'm going to say only good things about it. That doesn't make the video sponsored. Like, if the phone is good, I will recommend it. But if it sucks, I'm not going to recommend it. So I tried to make that really clear with them. And I said, so you want to send me this phone that's like early release. It's not out yet. Um, the, the specific model that they sent me is the... S100 Pro, um, and I and I made it clear. I was like, "Do you want me to return the phone when I'm done? Because I I've got trips planned and stuff. I don't want to take delivery of something that I'm gonna have to send back." And they said, "No, you can keep it. You don't have to send it back. This is just basically a, a goodwill offering, essentially, of just like, hey, um, check out our phone. Hopefully, you like it." Um, so they're they're comfortable with me keeping it, which is makes it interesting. I can do kind of long term ownership of it, and um, they're okay with me saying basically whatever I want. But what was funny is <laughs> what's really hilarious to me is I exp they said, "Can you get the can you get a video out about it?" Like they just asked, "Are you going to do a video on it by this time?" Which was like somewhere in mid June. And I said, well, I'm probably going to be gone by then, so I'll need the video, I'll need to put a video out or talk about it at least before then. Like, yeah, I want to check out the phone, but don't expect me to wait until a certain time. So I wanted to make clear to them, I'm not going to not talk about it until a later date because I, I after Dub Dub, we're going to have so much Apple stuff to talk about. I'm pretty sure Apple Reality Pro is going to happen um, and, and there's going to be all kinds of software things to talk about. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to talk too much about budget Android phones during Apple season. So if you want me to talk about this phone, I'm going to want it before. And that was the last thing I said. Then they said nothing. This was weeks ago. I was having these conversations like two or three weeks back. And they never replied to my email saying, I'm going to be busy mid-June, so I'm probably going to have to talk about it in May. Never replied. N they never responded, never sent me tracking information, never <laughs> never reached back out to see if I received the item, never said a word. Um, so my thought process when they ghosted me, and you know, normally the emails were responding within a couple hours, but then they just went quiet. They weren't saying anything for weeks. So I figured, oh, they probably didn't like that I said I want to talk about it in May or I want to talk about it early or something. Um, they probably didn't like that. So they just decided, eh, it's not a good fit for us, and they just moved on. So I kind of accepted, okay, that, that's not going to work out. They're not going to send me that phone. Um, and then yesterday, I, I went out and checked the mail, and there's this box. And I'm waiting for the M1 iPad Pro, by the way. I, I ordered from Amazon an M1 iPad Pro so I could try out Final Cut, and that's been delayed, and that's been late and everything. And I see this box that shows up in the mail, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Like... An iPad can't fit in this box. I had totally forgotten about this Doji interaction. Um, 
So I opened the box. I was like, what did we order? I don't remember ordering anything else. I thought we were just waiting on the iPad to show up. Um, so I opened the box and I'm like, oh, they actually sent it. They just didn't tell me they sent it or anything. Thank you, Dylan, for the support. I'm still very unconvinced about Reality Pro. I am having a harder time believing there won't be anything now that they're inviting so many people that normally don't go to the event and they're inviting a lot of people that are prominent in the VR community, but... It's not confirmed, so you're right. We shouldn't get our hopes up. Anyway, um, that's basically the background is that the communication has been very bizarre with the brand. Um, yeah, I'm I'm trying to be cautious of everything, which is why I've researched them and I've looked up other channels that have received phones from them. And it seems legit. It just is like a brand no one's heard of or at least is not very popular in the United States. Um, so this is very weird. I'm trying to warn you from the beginning. This is not your typical smartphone. Um, this is not the kind of, you know, Samsung Galaxy versus Pixel. But I've been saying for a while now that Androids are, um, like, all starting to blur together. All smartphones really are all just blurring into glass rectangles with thin bezels. So this one at least was a little bit curious to me because of how different the marketing was or uh, bizarre the... Um, style was for the phone. So we're in uncharted territory now. You're going in with this with me now. <laughs> what if Jason says, what if Drew likes this more than the Pixel? That might happen potentially. Um, so this is very weird. Um, this is not their first product. Uh, have you seen Max Tech Rumor video? No, I don't watch tech videos. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for freaking me from Android. Yeah, I'm I'm still planning on keeping around an Android phone and keeping around an iPhone so that I can accurately talk about both. Um, Doji probably was the one that delayed your iPad Pro delivery to be reviewed first. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Doji has stolen my iPad. But okay, now that you know the context and we've had some time for people to get in, let's switch to continuity camera with iPhone SE and dive right in. This is going to be weird. This might explode on me. Can you imagine? What if it's just a glitter bomb? <laughs> that would be kind of hilarious, actually. I'm opening it with a sim ejector tool. This is also deceptive marketing, I think. It says on it, it has 256 gigs of storage, so that's a good thing. But then 20 gigs of RAM, 12 plus 8, I think what they mean is what they're actually saying is up to 20 gigs because on the website I looked up this phone to do a little bit of research on it and it essentially comes across as like oh it's RAM is user upgradable I don't know how that's possible it's probably not real RAM it's some real real basic RAM that they put on a you know micro SD or something but okay I wonder what's gonna be on the top it's gonna say do not unbox this on camera whoa Okay, it's right there on the top. It's very big. It's very chonk, first impressions. This is a chonk, big chungus phone. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect, Cryptish, and I don't know what we're, what we're doing here. Um, yeah, that's the Pixel stand, which ironically cannot charge the Pixel 6a because the Pixel 6a does not have wireless charging. Okay. Doji S100. Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa, it's so heavy. This is like Energizer phone. It's enormous. So, you know how I said I don't like phones with cases? We're peeling the plastic off here. Peel this back. Oh my god. It's enormous. Woo. Okay, let me get this out of the way. This is an absolute unit. Holy crap. Is that metal? Wow, it is. Outward facing screws on the side is interesting. This is not in a case, by the way. I think this is honestly, you know what this is? This is a battery bank that also runs Android. Oh my God, it's, it's huge. What the heck? Oh, the SIM tray is here, okay. I looked this up. It 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 only has a physical SIM. I don't think it does eSIM. There's no room inside. It's all just a battery. So, a um, little bit of fun facts for you. 
because the specs I'm guessing is all this phone has. <laughs> My prediction is that the software is going to be horrible because it's a smaller company and it's just probably going to be a real basic uh, Android skin. I'm trying to figure out how you peel this off. There's a custom button. Hey, an action button before the iPhone had one. How do you peel off the screen thing? They didn't put like a tab somewhere. Ooh, that button. It makes a lot of wiggle sounds. Man, that could have been installed better. There's a fingerprint reader on the side. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this compared to the Pixel. I swear, if this phone wobbles, this is like the semi-truck of smartphones. Let me put this down on the table. I want to see. I want to see for a second if it wobbles. Zero wobble. Well, I could push really hard and get it to roll, but <laughs> if you're just tapping the display, zero wobble. How do you peel this part off? Is this supposed to come off? Is that a screen protector? No, there's like writing on it. That can't be the screen protector, can it? Oh, here you go. Here you go. Wow. Oh my God. Well, the screen actually looks kind of clean from the front. You know, I knew it would have somewhat chunk bezels, but they're actually not as chunk as the SE. A real basic Android skin isn't a bad thing. Maybe you're right, actually, but um, okay. Here's, here's the craziest spec, okay? It has 120 hertz or whatever, which is nice. That's kind of standard in the Android space. But most phones out there, you know, like the iPhone SE, they have around a 1,500, 2,000 milliamp hour battery. If you get a big phone, like maybe if you get a Pixel 7 Pro or you maybe get an iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can see a battery that's like... 4,000 milliamp hours on the high end. Maybe some Android phones go up to 5,000 milliamp hours. This phone, not 5,000 milliamp hours, not 6,000, not 7, not 8, not 9, not 10. 2,200. Oh, no, sorry, not 100. 22,000. <laughs> sorry. 22,000 milliamp hour battery. Battery that stores more energy than an iPad. Um, honestly, close to probably what a MacBook has in terms of battery. Oh, there's that's interesting. There's like a, a cover for the port on the bottom. I actually don't know what port this has. This better be USB-C. Okay, good. You passed the test, Doji. It's a USB-C connector at the bottom. Um, so honestly, I think if you hate Android, this might just be a great option as a mobile battery bank. I think this has more milliamp hours than my personal battery bank that I use for my my uh, microphone power. Oh, yeah. So you could just say 22 amp hours. That's like half of my MacBook. No, not half. It's like half a MacBook Air battery. Oh, my God. Can this go on a plane? I don't actually know. Um, but there's a lot of weird marketing terms they used on the website. Like they keep referring to the camera as an AI camera, which is like, what the heck? What, what does that even mean? Um, this back is made of some kind of these. So they, they pride themselves on durability. I don't like this sticker on the back. There's a bunch of information on it. I want to see if I can get it off. Ooh, very slowly. It feels like a paper sticker, which is dangerous. No, that actually came off okay. So this giant uh, arrow on the back is actually a flash, which I'm kind of curious to see how bright it is because they say it has like a night vision camera or whatever. I want to see how bad this stuff really is or how good because <laughs> this whole thing is still like 500 bucks. The final, hi Tyler, the final cut video is coming as soon as Amazon decides to actually give me the M1 iPad I ordered, but Apple didn't bring final cut to the A12X iPad, so I can't review it. We got to check it at the wall. You know, I'd love to, but I'm actually worried about my walls. You know, I would, I'm, I'm curious how badly it could damage. This is the Chuck Norris phone. This battery could charge my Tesla. <laughs> you guys are right. Can this uh, chunk access my home Wi-Fi network? <laughs> I hope so. This phone better last like a week on a charge. That's a good question. How long is the battery supposed to last? 
Okay, it supports 33 watt fast charging, which is honestly relatively slow in my opinion compared to how big the battery is. I would have expected like you could get to 100 watts or something because 100 watts with a battery this big is honestly not that fast. Um, thankfully, I believe it does support wireless charging, which is important to me, and I think reverse wireless charging. I'm trying to find out. Um, so there's a triple camera. I wonder if any of them are actually deactivated and they're just there to look cool. It's a, the main sensor is 108 megapixels, one is 20 megapixels, and the other is 16, but it, I can't tell which one. Is it telephoto and ultrawide? I think it ships with Android 12, so it's not like a super newer version. 32 megapixel front camera. Yeah, this is, I think this is going to be an indication of um, high megapixel count doesn't mean good. Uh, go down the highway and check it out the window and see what happens. Well, you know, it's very durable feeling on the sides. You got this kind of hard plastic feeling back. You've got this rubberized exterior. This is a phone that really does not need a case at all. Um, speakers, I believe, on there's like four. There's like two up here, two up here, or down there. And um, I get, yeah, why would you put a case on this thing? Like, what's the point? I wonder how hard it is to remove the back, actually. I'd be curious. But yeah, it's it's meant to be strong, I guess. The sides are metal, but the top feels rubber. But the main glass, I believe, is just Gorilla Glass 5. So the main part, I don't know. I, they probably include more in the box. Let me take a look. Um, more screen protector type stuff. Jeez, this thing is so heavy. So an I, to give you guys some perspective, an iPhone 14 Pro Max is about 240 grams. This is 400 grams. But what's bothering me right off the bat is these buttons. Um, I mean, they click, but they do not feel like they were installed in a very rigid form. Just listen to this. You can hear the buttons rattling around. Maybe that's the lenses. I don't know. But I wanna, I'm curious how bright that light is. Okay. What else is in the box here? Limited warranty. Okay. Screen protector. Look at this font. What is this? Okay, so that's your screen <laughs> How did they choose that font? Hey, we should just give them credit for spelling it correctly. Oh my god. Um, looks like a Motorola phone from 2010 that a Walmart <laughs> employee uses for it. <laughs> oh my god. What they didn't even include the right charge brick. This is for the European Union. I cannot use this. <laughs> Why did they send the Why did they send the EU charger? <laughs> do they even know who they're talking to? Uh, like they saw the address, they they knew where they were shipping it to. Um that's weird. I guess it ships with a type C to type C cable. Well, hey, I mean, uh, a $1600 iPhone doesn't ship with a charge brick anyway, so I guess I shouldn't complain. Maybe I need to take a trip to Europe just so I can use that brick. Um, but at least it came with a Type-C cable. It's kind of, it's decently, it's kind of normal. Um, yeah, it does look like a warehouse phone, I agree. This is so weird. <laughs> this is probably one of the weirdest things I've ever unboxed. I've never seen a phone that thick before. Thankfully, there's no wobble, though. That's, that's all I'm grateful for. How, how many flashes does your phone have? See, typical Pixel. It's got one flash right here, right? Typical doji, giant high beam, one, two, three, four flashes on the back. <laughs> this is probably not sold in the U.S. It's available for pre-order on the U.S. website um, on, on their page. It says the first they first start shipping June 1st, so I'm a little bit early. But, okay, should we actually see how bad the software is? Let's boot this thing up. I don't even know which is the power button. This is an action button on the side and then power on the other side. Oh my God, the screen is massive. All right, I'm holding it down. Here it comes. Powered by Android. Yeah, it's got a bit of a chin, that's for sure. But hey, at least it has my preferred, it's got the teardrop notch. I was just saying in a previous stream how much I prefer the notch to the hole punch. Ooh, ooh, that was a low frame rate. <laughs> you can actually see, oh, hi there. Okay, we're in. I believe it's a 1080p display, which is fairly sharp. 
But yeah, the teardrop notch doesn't cut in on content as much, in my opinion. Let me hit start. We're going to skip the mobile network thing. Um, I'll connect to my Wi-Fi. Ooh, still taptic feedback. I, I, I don't know what I was expecting. It didn't feel like there should be taptic feedback on a device this heavy. Um, I'm just connecting to my Wi-Fi. It's very, like, it's not super, like, hard taptics. It's really soft. It's really, like, but quiet. Okay, it's getting the phone ready. Jeez. This display's pretty bright. I know I'm inside, but... Man, I'm not used to seeing... There's, like, an earpiece speaker, and then there's two speakers on top of that. I wonder if they're all activated. I think... I think that's a good question. Is it an OLED display? Um, I don't think so. It doesn't say, which is why I'm guessing it isn't. Um, it's probably... That's that's how they can get a 120 hertz display so cheap. It's a 6.58 inch full HD 120 hertz IPS. So my guess is it's an LCD. Oh, that's fun. Couldn't connect to the internet. <laughs> well, that was easy. Wait, it says limited connection. This is, so if the live stream crashes, you'll know that this thing is taking over my my Wi-Fi network. Pop up camera was and still is the best solution. Then why did everyone stop doing it? It must be hard to manufacture. I think that's for India. I remember it being a different layout of pins for EU. Really? People are saying that's not a Europe plug. Oh, really? Okay. What does it say? It says model EU. Is my get that was my guess. Um, it doesn't want to connect to my Wi-Fi. That's an interesting problem. Okay, it wants it wants uh, date and time, so I might as well give it to it. It was defaulting to London. Um, where are we? I'm in America, not Central. Where's Pacific? There it is. Okay, the date is the twenty fourth. Oh, okay, it did know the time. Google services. Just to be safe, because this is a random phone from China that was sent to me, I'm going to turn off the privacy stuff. Um, hit accept. Set a pin. Okay, I'm going to set one real quick. Man, this thing is huge. This is really a phone you have to two-hand. Oh, it has face unlock. Ta-da! It's probably the basic, you know, camera face unlock style, but... Um, I'll just say no thanks for now. And it's got a fingerprint reader. We'll set that up later. I just want to mess around with some of this. Oh, it asks if I want gestures or three button. Of course, I want to go with gestures. You can't, yeah, it, you cannot use this phone with one hand. Oh my God. Look at this default home screen. Very iOS-like. Actually, it felt very Samsung to me with all the rounded, the squircle icons. There's game mode. I'll be honest. Moving around this display, it does not feel 120 hertz to me at all. I do not think this is 120 hertz. I know they say it is, but I know it's very hard for me to showcase it on the display, but it does not feel smooth. It barely feels 60 hertz. I wonder if that's just during game mode or something, or it's a setting you can turn on. Let me go into settings. This also feels very iOS-like. Um... <laughs> different EU plugs. That's Chinese firmware, all right. Yeah, the, the display responsiveness is kind of there. Let me go into display settings. Theme mode. Yeah, I don't see... Advanced. Let's go down that to that. Oh, it's, it is 60 hertz out the box. Look at that. Screen refresh rate. Okay, 60. So you go. You have to activate it in the box. Let's, let's set it to... A, they have 90 as well. 120 hertz. Oh, yeah. No, that's... Okay, now it's smooth. See, I can tell the difference. It's not just placebo. Because I had all the reason to expect this phone to be 120 hertz out of the box. So I could have said, Whoa, it's 120. But no, my eyes were like, That is not 120. Okay, it's on now. The battery's at 99%. I'm curious how long this will last. Um, yeah, it's not... It wasn't turned on. Clock settings for screen. There's a game mode. Oh, camping light. This is the one I want to try out. Oh, they give you a warning. Camping lights do not shine into eyes when camping light is on. Okay, I'll hit yes. So we have SOS or Super. 
Oh, there's there's levels. The camping light app. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I've never seen a camping light on a phone before. Okay, so let's start with quarter, and then you can go half, and then you go full. All right, here we go. Get ready, you guys. You gotta save that battery after all. I know. There's only 22,000 milliamp hours. We better keep it at 60 hertz out the box, right? Okay. I'm gonna hit... Oh, the display shut off. Is it because I wasn't touching it? Okay. Every time you open the app, it gives you that disclaimer. Here's quarter. Whoa. Okay, that's not terrible. That's pretty bright. I would say that's like average smartphone flash. Maybe a little brighter because it's longer. Now let's do half. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty bright. Now let's do full. Dang. Okay, even though it's like light in here. I mean, it wasn't as great. Okay, yeah, don't look at it. That's a bad idea. <laughs> I shouldn't look at it. Then we have SOS and super. Whoa! Oh my god, that's horrible. Sorry, epilepsy warning. Yeah, do not shine into eyes. Points directly in eyes. That's beautiful. Oh, and of course, there's a child mode in case I want to give this to my kids. <laughs> turn off all the lights. I might... Well, a lot of my lights are natural, so I can't turn off the sun. Yeah, I want to spare some battery on my 22,000 milliamp hours. I don't want to waste it. Let me try the camera. Because there's a mode for night vision, and there's a mode for... 108 megapixels. Let's see how important megapixels really are. Oh, and of course, there's a beauty mode. That's important. But ironically, I don't see options for like different lenses. There's just a zoom option. What are these other lenses doing? Okay, hopefully the flash doesn't go off, but... Oh, it made that horrible sound. Did you hear that? Okay, 108 megapixels. Here's the result. Uh, ooh. This does not look 108 megapixels to me. <laughs> this is... Uh, maybe I should uh, near drop it. Does it support near drop? If I hit share... Yeah! My Mac supports that, I think. Let me hit nearby share. The actual size is 12 megabytes. For 108 megapixels, I expected it to be a lot bigger. Let's see if it's actually lying. I want to use the... Oh, okay. I went to the details of the picture. It does say it's a 108 megapixel image, but the lens probably on the other side is f1.8 aperture. ISO is pretty high. Okay, I like the 120 hertz though. I haven't had a phone with that in a while, so I'm kind of like, whoa, this is smooth. Um, I have a phone with three mystery lenses too. <laughs> Give this to a kid so that he breaks his arm while holding <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Thank you, Nub God Rising, for the super chat. What made you like an iPhone slash Apple uh, than over Samsung? Um, the ecosystem, I suppose, and the user interface. Um, I I like the way these are all semantics. One phone has one camera. One phone has a different camera. But how the tech works together more reliably. Things like AirDrop and iMessage and uh, FaceTime and now the Wallet app. I did a whole video on that, Nub God. Just watch watch my last video. <laughs> Um, turn on nearby share. Yeah, let's try that. Um, turn on device location. Oh, no, wait. You need, uh, you need to be connected to Wi-Fi, I think, for near... It's not... You'll have to take my word for it. It's not a very sharp... Even when I zoom in, it's a fairly blurry lens. Megapixels do not mean good. Um, I wonder what the max video resolution is. Video quality. Oh, that's interesting. It maxes out at just 2K. Must be a really basic processor they put in this thing. And I don't see any options for frame rate. So, feels like there's a noticeable lag too. You see like the difference between how I move it and what it shows. Huh. I uh, turned off HDR. Is there an ultra wide? Is that what that is? Oh yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Ultra wide just looks permanently out of focus. How can I show this to you? That's, it's not super ultra wide, but like it just, no matter how close I get to something and I tap on it, it's always blurry. Ooh, it makes noises. Why can't you use debit cards on Apple website and where do you pre-order your iPhones and Apple cases? 
uh, I don't buy Apple cases for one. Thank you for the super chat. But um, you you can use debit cards on Apple website. I don't. <laughs> this sounds like a question for Apple support. They will help you out for free. I don't. That I've used debit cards on Apple's website before. I just use Apple Pay, um, and I use the Apple Store app to pre-order iPhones. But I would check with Apple support rather than a random stream where I'm unboxing an Android phone and trying to set it up. Sorry if I'm not very helpful. Um, yeah, there's three lenses, but I only see a main sensor and an ultra wide sensor that is permanently out of focus. Oh wait, maybe it just focused. It just took forever. Okay, now it's focusing. Weird. Autofocus is very slow. Wow, I did not realize a camera could be this bad. It's impressive. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I I feel like <laughs> like how it has an FM radio app out the box. I feel like we should try to figure out um, why this doesn't want to connect to my Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to try it again. Obtaining IP address. Connected. Okay. Now it seems to be working. Do we got YouTube in here? Yeah. I want to just listen to... Oh, look at the, the volume indicator. I like how there's TikTok ads on YouTube. That's always good. Um, I <laughs> The third lens is probably two megapixel macro camera. You're probably right. Except on the website, it calls it tw 108 megapixels, 20 megapixels, and 16 megapixels. <laughs> Which is not ideal. Um, it makes so much noise when you're typing. Did you hear this? Oh, that's weird. Yeah, we don't know if the Pro Max comes in red. Thank you for the super chat, but yeah, I'll probably pre-order it. I don't know if I'll keep it or not, but um, let's listen to some Randy tunes. Ooh. Yeah, these are the... Okay, it gets... It gets decently loud, but very treble heavy. Very little bass in those speakers. At least they're front facing. Hmm. Okay, speakers. I wouldn't call them great. I wouldn't ride home for uh, Dolby Atmos or any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, oh, front facing camera. Why didn't I think to try that? Wait, how do you activate the front facing camera? Is the better question. Oh. That's that's a design flaw. So there's the ultra wide button that's just two trees, and there's no way to switch that to the front facing. So you have to go back to the main lens, and then the rear facing, I mean the front facing camera option appears. And here we are. Actually, this one doesn't look that bad. It looks sharper to me a little bit. Let me try if there's a oh that sound is horrible. Um you don't need, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this live stream is a bit more focused on something, which is why um, I would recommend not asking about too many Apple products. Wow, okay. I mean, it's still a little blurry around the edges, but the front facing camera, which is allegedly a 32 megapixel, looks a lot better than the rear facing, which is ironic. Um, well, now I can now I can do near drop, I think. Let me try it. Um, uh, Andrew's MacBook. Okay. I want to show you guys what it looks like. It says sending. Um, where, where did it go? Failed. Oh, that's interesting. Can't complete one transfer. Okay. Nearby share, which is like their version of AirDrop. I should be on, on the Mac. Huh. Why didn't it show up? Maybe they put a cheap Wi-Fi modem in it or something. No account. Oh, maybe that's the problem. It wants me to sign in to everything. Um, does it have a headphone jack? I don't see one, so I'm guessing no. They couldn't fit it. There was just too much battery space in this. Um, 
looks like it may benchmark around the iPhone SE 2, but that's just extrapolation. Uh, Michael V says, this is essentially a $500-ish GPS power bank and communication tool. To get a rugged GPS and comparable battery bank separately would probably be a similar price. True. Although now you're carrying around several things rather than just one thing. I'm curious if this can... You know what I want to know? If this is mainly just a great battery bank, can this charge my MacBook? Um, no, you have to get a third-party program called Neardrop and put that on your Mac to get nearby share on the Mac, which I have done. It has let me, uh, it has allowed me to back up, uh, what do you call it? Uh, air, nearby share things to my Mac from my Pixel, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to do it. Yeah, okay, here it is. No, oh, I clicked it off on accident. Um, okay, let me log in real quick. Andrew's Mac is an option, so I'm going to tap it, connecting, but yeah, it just, it just crashed. <laughs> Maybe it's because I need to sign into my account. It wants me to do that. This is the control center, which is weird. A lot of overlap. Um, I don't think you can do Android and iOS via nearby share. I don't think that'll work. Um, I just found a workaround. I'll do a video on that later. Um, am I going to put my SIM in this one? I, I don't know yet. I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> I might need to play around with it a little more. I mean, the the nicest part, I would say, is the 120 hertz display and the battery. But can this charge my MacBook? Like, what's the output? Well, first of all, we should also check to make sure wireless charging works. Yeah, place it on the Pixel stand. Good, good idea. Okay. I'm going to move this over. I don't think this lip is going to hold it. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Let's see what happens if I try. Oh, I don't see any reaction. Maybe it's just not, it's too tall. Maybe the coils aren't in the right place. Let's see if I hold it here. Hmm. Whoa, I hear it making noises. That's always a good sign when you're trying to wirelessly charge. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's not like reacting to it at all. Maybe it needs MagSafe. <laughs> Should we try that? 8.9 Texas, I'm guessing you're going to upgrade to 15 Pro Max in September. We'll see. I'm not saying I won't. I'm not saying I will. I'm just saying I'm going to wait and see. Where should the coils be? Yeah, this is, I feel like a doctor. I'm checking for a pulse. You put MagSafe on the back. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of it. That's weird. I believe it's supposed to have wireless charging, but I'm getting nothing. Or maybe it is charging and it's just, it has no animation for it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's already at 98%, probably mostly because of that flashlight. Weird. Okay. Well, let me at least try charging out. Let me see if this included cable works. Man, that's a deep USB-C port in there. Um, just use Google Drive. Well, I'm live streaming, so if I start uploading, it's going to tank the bit rate, but I could always try that later. Can the own included? Jeez. It does not feel very secure when you plug in the... This is just a big, big battery bank. Okay. I'm plugged in USB-C there. I'm going to disconnect my MacBook Pro from power. So we're on battery now from the MacBook. Can you imagine if it doesn't charge at all? That would be kind of hilarious. All right, let me plug it in. Whoa! <laughs> the MacBook starts charging. Oh my God. It doesn't even try to, it's not trying to charge. It charged twice, by the way, which is weird. Power source, power adapter, high power mode on, fully charged. Wow. 
The phone is powering the MacBook. I need to go into system information here. Is there a waterproof rating? Yeah, I think it says IP68 and IP69K. What does that even mean? Should we look that up? Whoa. IP69K rating provides protection against ingress of dust in high temperature, high pressure water. Um, so you can use this, you can pressure wash this phone, I guess. I See, my thought was that I was going to have to set up the power draw thing um, so that I could, because my first impression is that if I plugged in the phone to the MacBook, it would want to charge the phone. But by default, it the MacBook starts pulling power. <laughs> um, you must have to change the setting. It probably output at 15 watts, but you need high amperage to charge the MacBook properly. That thing is probably output, so it's really slow and not efficient at all. Well, that's why I wanted to see in... Let me look up in system information. You go to power settings here. What is it getting? AC power. Low power mode. How many? We're at 90% battery health, by the way. Um, wattage three. <laughs> so it's charging it at three watts. I guess that's not very much. Um, that's probably all it can output, but is it going to give me any kind of settings here? Here. Go down. Charging connected device via USB. No data transfer. USB controlled by this device. Charge connected device. That's good. Um, <laughs> fully charged, yes. Charging, no. State of charge, 100%. That's weird. Um, but it doesn't tell me up there that uh, battery is not charging. But that could be just because I'm at full. Unlimited power! Looks like a POS. <laughs> well... I will say they probably didn't put much emphasis into... I, I got to admit, those animations are pretty nice, though, compared to the pixel. It very much feels like battery bank that's also running Android, which is hilarious. Clock app, wow. Yeah, it feels like they just straight up ripped off the iOS animations, which I'm kind of okay with because I prefer iOS. Anim well, now it's not animating at all. That's nice. Um, the speakers were not great. They said there's a, uh, there's something else I was curious about. There's some kind of, uh, mono, oh, that's interesting. We'll flip the lens around here. Okay, yeah, this is bad. This is, <laughs> it's not listening to me. I'll go to picture mode, flip the camera around, night vision. Oh, maybe that's what that other lens is. This reportedly can work in pitch black, which, yeah, okay, it is night vision. That's interesting. So if I stick this in, like, it's a strange-looking iPhone. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, hey, Apple knows how to do it. Maybe if I stick it in my here closet real quick. My closet is dark. Um, it looks like MUI by it, Xiaomi. It probably is. Uh, it's better used for smartphones because smartphones don't need high amperage to charge. Yeah, that's true. It's just funny to me that as soon as I plug my phone into the MacBook, the MacBook starts taking power. So I'm going to let my battery drain on the MacBook a little bit so we can get a bit more accurate data. But this is night vision, which allegedly lets you take pictures in... and actually have a preview, unlike night mode. But, yeah. I'm sticking it in pitch black and you can still... In the closet, you can still see everything. But is it just pictures or there's a camera button as well? Okay, so I can take videos in the dark. This would be good for like a found footage movie. <laughs> Front facing and night vision cameras by Sony, but not the rest. Interesting. There's still a zoom option. Wow, actually the zoom is not bad. I mean, it's, it's only 4x, but it's fairly for night vision. It preserves a lot of the quality. Huh. And it might be interesting to play around with at night. Because normally with night mode and stuff, you have to, like, 
take the picture, hold it for 10 seconds, and then it post-processes. This is just straight up real-time capturing it, um, which is kind of interesting. Settings, anti-flicker, shutter sound. Oh, that's what we need to turn off because it made that horrible noise. Let me um, remind you guys what it sounds like. How do you get out of night vision mode? You have to tap night vision mode again. I, it's amazing how bad you can design software, honestly. Beauty mode, that's what I need. Okay, so if you take a picture with beauty mode, ooh, makes this, how do you turn up the volume? Um, let me, where's control center? Okay. It's just like an iPhone. They put it in the, to activate control center, you have to go from the top right. But if you don't go from the top right, it's notification center. See, it's just like my iPhone. It's great. It's an infrared light. Yeah. Um, can the night vision camera see through thin plastic like TV remotes? Ooh, that's an interesting question. What could I, I don't have a TV remote with me, but. Um, I'm going to turn off the shutter sound because that's horrible. I like how they give you an option to have a watermark on the picture. Like what? Um, why? Picture size. You could do 4 by 3 so they give you aspect ratio settings in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's from a company called Doji for those curious. Um, you're tempted to pronounce it doggy or doogie. <laughs> But it's pronounced Doji, I guess. And um, this phone's available for pre-order on their website. I'm only saying that because someone asked. Um, I guess I should have put the link in the description, huh? Um, came came with a screen protector. But, yeah, this is quite a niche phone. Um, trying to figure out the market for it. But, yeah, I think that must be using a telephoto... No, I don't think it's a telephoto. It's just, it's optical zooming a lot with the 108 megapixel by cropping. It's it's just such a large sensor that you can zoom in a ton. And there's still a decent amount of quality, but it's not great, obviously. Um, what is this? There's an AI button at the top. What could that do? If I tap AI. The smart photo mode has been opened. Okay, now what happens? What is <laughs> what is AI mode do? Um, I'll just take a picture of my pixel or something. I think it's five hundred dollars. Any idea on the chip? Oh yeah, it's on the website. It's something weird, something I didn't recognize. It's a Helio G ninety nine octa core six nanometer chip. So they're not even on five nanometer architectures yet, and Apple's about to switch to three. Um, Let's do a picture with AI mode. Does that actually take the picture? No, it doesn't. Of course not. What does ZSD do? What is this? I don't even... I don't even know, but... This thing is such a brick. It's going to make all of their phones I use feel so much lighter. Um... Currently rocking an 11 Pro Max, it's going to be a huge upgrade to the 15 Pro Max. Good for you. Okay, if I click the action button, nothing happened. Oh, wait, did it take a picture? It was just really delayed? Uh, move to try. This is my, this is my beauty mode shot. <laughs> it's wonderful. Media tech, move to trash. This picture is not horrible. With the front-facing camera. I'm actually like, it's not great, for the record. It's not a great shot, but it's almost usable. <laughs> um, Sim toolkit sound recording. Oh, yeah, how does the mic sound? High voice quality normal mode. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, wow. Okay, it's recording me, I think. So it's, it has a microphone. That's a good sign. Um, yeah, this phone, you're right, Anna Maria. This phone needs to go on a diet, I think. It looks like a phone that's in a ginormous case, but it really isn't. Um, 
it's probably thicker than a lot of phones in cases, but okay, I'm going to stop the recording, hit save and listen to it back. How's the audio? Okay, it's recording me, I think. So it's, it has a microphone. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's not um, a very good microphone, but <laughs> it does have one. Um, this is interesting. I wasn't sure what that is. When you pull up and hold, you can screenshot. Hey, at least it has a clear all button. Um, wait, free 8.4 gigs out of 12. Is that how much RAM it has? Does it give you much? Battery, not charging. We're at 98% after all of this stuff. Um, corners are fairly rounded like an iPhone. It is heavy. Um, uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max, which I believe is the heaviest iPhone, is 240 grams. This is 400 grams, nearly a pound basically, but it has a 22,000 milliamp hour battery, which is kind of insane. And yet it still has 60 hertz out the box, which is like what? But, okay, my MacBook's now down to 97%. So, the, yes, this is the phone that can charge your MacBook. Um, this is the benefit of USB-C, I guess. I'm going to plug it in and see if the MacBook starts charging. Yep. Um, Final Cut also wants to start importing pictures immediately, but it doesn't have any for them. Okay, so, yeah, now it says battery not charging, and we're at 96%, because, yeah, 3 amps is probably not enough. Self-defense brick review. <laughs> uh, do you think it's bad to be on phone at night? Uh, to a point, yeah. But a little bit here and there is probably not a big deal. But I guess it's not technically increasing the charge rate. It's probably just decreasing um, how quickly the MacBook battery goes down. Once you go 120 hertz, there's no going back. Well, I already did. I did go back. It's not fun, but you can do it. Um, it's funny to me that out the box, the action button does literally nothing. Maybe if I hold it. No. Holding it does nothing. So I guess you're supposed to set that up in settings. And they just expect you to know to do that. As NFC, that's good. Auto rotate is on. Um, oh, underwater mode. What could that be? Camping lamp. I wonder how deep this is rated. Um... Water resistance is IP68, right? That's that's what the Apple Watch is rated. Aren't the iPhones more like IP67? Weird. 18 hours. They say 18 hours max runtime for the camping light. Jeez. Um, it's full. This is. People are saying it's lasts over a day on a charge. I was like, I would hope so. Probably more than that. Huh. Uh, can adapt to various extreme environments. This is the highest water resistance and dust resistance I've ever seen. Although I will admit the display is not super bright. The brightness is at full. I think it's like 500 nits brightness, which is not amazing. Um, People have probably asked this a hundred times, but do you miss the SE iPhone after these Android adventures? Yes, but luckily it's not too far away. I'm using my iPhone SE as a continuity camera right now for the unboxing. Um, yeah, it's such a weird, such a weird camera layout. But hey, I finally found a phone that eliminates the the wobble. There's no wobbling going on here. The infrared mode is probably the most interesting thing about this camera to me because the the main picture performance is, is pretty bad. Oh, look at that. It says text. So when you highlight a piece of paper, it just, it says, I know that that is text. Yeah, but I'm noticing this issue of like the haziness. When you do uh, 108 megapixels, you usually get really soft around the edges. And that is very obvious with this. Um, I don't see a macro mode. There's a pro mode, a bokeh mode. And that's separate from portrait mode. I wonder what the difference is between bokeh mode and portrait. I see no, no difference with, it says bokeh X. I literally can't tell the difference. 
this mode might be completely useless. Okay. Um, normal picture mode. It's very weird how it blurs around the edges. Oh, it wanted to use the flash that time, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, not, not a good camera, that's for sure. <laughs> it's very blurry. <laughs> um, some people can feel the difference between 120 hertz and 60 hertz. My sister can feel the difference even though she's a casual user. Yeah, it's not it's not a one size fits all. It's not everybody can see it or nobody can actually see it. It just depends on the person. Um, did I get an M1 iPad Air or the M1 iPad? <laughs> what, Luke, are you asking? I got a 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro and it's supposed to be here several days ago, but Amazon didn't send it to me. Um, iPhone is IP68, but they're like different resistance for IP68, right? I want to know like 68 for how long. Uh, and it's weird, their website doesn't really explain it, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I wonder what the, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the logic is with the company sending this to me. Obviously they don't watch most of my videos. Because they know, you know, I can't really be bought. I can't just s say something nice about a phone or say you should buy a phone simply because um, it was sent to me. That, that didn't work with Google and it's definitely not going to work with Doji. But um, it's funny, my MacBook battery is still going down quite a bit. It's at 93%, so I don't think this is helping much. Maybe it could charge another phone, but if it can only output at 3 watts, that's that's awfully slow, isn't it? Um like, is the logic that they just think if we if we read the tech specs in a YouTube video that they'll get more people buying it? Is that the logic they're going with? Um, IP68 is up to two meters for 30 minutes. So it l at least has that. That's It's got that going for it. But yeah, I'd be... Curious to see, like, okay, yes, the phone can survive being thrown out of a moving car at highway speeds, but would you want it to, you know? Like, if if you're throwing your phone out of a moving car at highway speeds, is it, do you want it to survive? That, to me, points to the idea that you want it to die. Oh, look, Google Assistant's listening to me. I'm not sure if you were talking to me. <laughs> It's well, I mean, you know, it's at least possible to set it up in the United States because it's uh, I'm just actually, you know what, I haven't tried yet the pocket test. Let's try putting this in. I want to just see how it feels like. Oh my god, <laughs> look at this! That thing barely fits in your pocket because it's so bulky. Oh, I'm just walking around, yeah. It's really pulling down my pants. <laughs> it's so heavy. My goodness. I wonder if the, you know, if they're if they're being deceptive about how much RAM there is. I wonder if there genuinely is a 22,000 milliamp hour battery or if they're exaggerating a bit, you know. Flashlight. Full. Yeah, that gets really bright. And then this would be a great... Maybe a good, not great, maybe a decent phone to go camping with because the camera's not very good, so you'll just enjoy the moment more? Is that the logic? <laughs> um, everyone acts like LumaFusion doesn't exist just because they got early access. <laughs> LumaFusion is great. Um, went back and watched the unboxing. <laughs> Tried doing that in tight jeans. I wonder if this phone would even fit in tight jeans. I mean, just look at it compared to a Pixel. Pixel 6a, Doji. It's enormous. Yeah, it, it is good for inventory tracking, I feel like. But even that, you probably need a decent camera. Front-facing camera is probably the best one, to be honest. With a bizarre amount of zoom. You can really... This is the front-facing camera, and you can still pinch in quite a bit <laughs> does that work with two yeah okay i don't think any of these is a telephoto lens they're just like it's a 16 megapixel lens that 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 does what is it macro is it telephoto i don't know but there's a lens <laughs> 
could run a bug zapper off that phone bed. And maybe that would be a good use. 22,000 milliamp hour bug zapper. But yeah, it's impressive to me how bad the camera is. Is there a way to like, isn't there a way to get like the Google um, algorithm for picture quality? Like, is there a Google camera app that you can download and then it'll use like the pixel style processing on another Android phone? Arguably bad camera, mid-performing chip, and runs Android. <laughs> Perfect for smartphone addiction, except for the fact that the battery will last so long. Oh, I was wondering what these holes were at the bottom. This is a strap. This is a place for you to put like a loop. Like you could, you could like dangle this. Like you could have a, a little clip ring basically for it, you know, to just have it hang on something. I don't know, like hanging off the side of your tent. I didn't realize how bad a 108 megapixel camera could be. That's the impressive part. But it, it even does like the iOS green light indicator when the camera's being accessed and stuff. It's funny. Feels like I'm pretending I have an iPhone. We'll do a video test here. Okay. Wow. Why did the quality take such a dive from the preview once I started recording a video? Yeah, you have to be really far away from it to focus properly. Okay. I can try to play it back for you, but... Oh, and it's upside down. That's great. Okay. <laughs> wow. Why did the quality take such a dive from the preview once I started recording a video? It has to save that extra processing power. This needs to be rotated. Can you do that? Um, there we go. Rotate. Save. Saving video. Now we're good. Okay. Wow. Why did the quality take such a dive from the preview <laughs> once I started recording a video? I wonder where the action button settings are. What would you guys set your action button to? Update us for the night vision video. I think that might be interesting. Can I pull this out? Oh, wow. You don't even need a tool. Just with your fingernail, you can open the, the SIM tray. I feel like I'm going to break it. Yeah, geez. Oh, and it's a big one too. Oh, I see. Because you can do a micro SD or a SIM. Well, I mean both. That was a big that tray. Did you hear the noise it made? Okay, I'm going to put it back here. It's in. But yeah, it just has a little area for you to clip it. So just with my fingernail. Listen to this. Listen. That sounds horrifying. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. What a weird... You know, as bizarre as the cameras are... And um, as clunky as the software is, and completely not thought through, do we have to give them points for originality? Like, I mean, come on. All phones these days are just... This phone has a glass back and doesn't even have wireless charging. At least this phone they acknowledged, okay, if we're not going to have wireless charging, let's just make it as durable and as thick as possible. Some people have been saying, hey, why don't you get rid of the camera bump by increasing the size of the battery and making the phone thicker? Here's a company that did it. Here's the outcome. Honestly, I bet the thickness of this is not terribly different from how thick the camera bump will be on the 15 Pro Max. I bet it would be somewhat similar to this. This is the outcome, I guess. Um, the action button would be the flashlight. I'd be worried about accidentally setting it off, though. That's what would concern me, because it's very bright. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you're looking for a phone with a camera, don't get this one. <laughs> It'd probably be better off if it didn't have a camera at all. Because I can't think of anything I would want to take a picture of with this that would actually be usable. Um, especially if it's limited to just 2K at 30 FPS. Um, Front-facing camera is probably your best bet. Maybe, I guess, for video calls you could get by with... But man, that UI is clunky. I wish the flash would just light up this whole arrow thing. Um, far more interesting than any iPhone leak at the moment. Yeah, I know, right? It's just, it's like we're talking about volume buttons and stuff. Here you go. Um, so this is the fingerprint reader, I guess. They put it into the side. Um, how much do you think it's worth spending on? I don't know, man. I, I'm trying to decide. 
I'm I'm actually not so much cross shopping this with Pixels or other Android phones, because just from a usability standpoint, this is so heavy. Like just trying to use it with one hand is going to feel ridiculous, and it's a big display. Um, they don't they didn't copy the iOS reachability feature to swipe things down. Um, but what I might consider cross shopping it to is battery banks. How much is, let me look that up real quick. I, I want to know if anyone has a battery bank bigger. Uh, I'm just going to look up 22,000 milliamp hour power bank and see what the prices are like. Oh, wow. There's one on Amazon for 30 bucks. That's 40,000. Jeez. That's a good deal. Yeah, that I would rather have that. And it has a flashlight built into it. <laughs> and it doesn't run Android. That's so much better. Um, yeah, you can find pa battery banks with 22,000 and 26,000 milliamp hours for like 20, 40 bucks. Um, so yeah, that's that definitely makes this a hard sell. I guess if you just really don't want to charge your phone. I'm trying to think. What would, what would you do with this? I guess it can play YouTube videos. Um, so if you wanted a media consumption device that could last a long time... You would benchmark it with other rugged phones. Amazon milliamp hour ratings are very sus. Yeah, they probably are. This one is sponsored and it's a bestseller though, and it has four and a half stars if that's trustworthy. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not a cheaper way to get a battery bank. That's for sure. Um, if you wanted a hundred twenty hertz display, but I'm guessing the chip is not that great. There's something called Game Mode. There's an app called Game Mode. I'm guessing that just blocks your calls. Weird. I can't exit out of it now. I'm trying to swipe up to go home and it won't let me. Press again to exit the program. Okay. So I'm guessing you download games and then open that app. Um, it's for people working in mines. There you go. <laughs> I'm really grasping at straws here trying to figure out what this phone is good at. Um, because obviously this company was very desperate for me to try it out. They really, they really wanted me to have this. They kept emailing me over and over again. But yeah, camera I would say is probably the most disappointing thing. Um, I'll have to play around with a few games. I guess I could try to download one. Um, this wants me to sign in, of course. Why, yeah, why would game mode need to be an app? That's a good question. I'm going to be in four choirs at my high school next year. I'm getting an iPad for handling sheet music. I'm thinking 2018 11-inch iPad Pro and eBay or Amazon Renewed. Any thoughts? Great idea. Silver Builder, you're, you've are you you've already figured out exactly what I would have recommended. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, no matter how gimmicky it is, the night vision camera is the most interesting, interesting thing about it for me. Yeah, because you can actually record videos in pitch black. I'm going to... It's too bad everything is so bright in here. I want to see how dark we can get it. But, yeah, I think I'll definitely post updates about that. Um, can you move? It would be nice if you could move the settings up here. Um, if I go picture, I already lost night mode. Is it in video settings? Oops, not anti-flicker. Man. I lost it. Oh, it's because I'm on... I keep forgetting. You can't access all of the settings if you're on one lens. So I have to go to the rear-facing camera and then the night vision option appears. What you should be doing is... if Just leave the night vision mode there and then when you activate it, it switches to the main lens. It saves steps. Come on, man. It's night vision like outside. If I put it at AirPods, no, can't see through that. Is there anything else it could see through? Is it just boosting the contrast? Well, oh, that is interesting though. I can just point it at things and it sees through them. I'm trying to find something that it could x-ray vision, but I guess I need an old TV remote, huh? Power brick? No. But it's weird. It's like having a little mini flashlight. I guess I haven't had much experience with an IR camera. Um, try taking a night vision photo of your trash bag. 
I guess I could, but you can see through that anyway. Um, but like if I, if I come down here, it's pretty dark under my desk. I take a picture and yeah, it's, I mean, it's black and white, but you can, you can see all of it. It feels like having a flashlight that's just for you, just on the screen, but not in the real world. Um, camera UI doesn't look too hot. No, nothing about the camera other than night vision is very hot. Um, I wonder why near drop doesn't want to work though. Yeah. Let's see. I've got Andrew's MacBook. Um, oh, is it working? Except <gasps> it worked. Well, that time it did something. Okay. Let me open this up. There you, oh, wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> There's the, it's not very sharp, but I mean, this is in pitch black and it didn't have to do any post-processing. Okay, let me try to near drop some other things now that we got it working. For some reason. Maybe this one is a better example. Try it again. Except, so I'm, I'm like basically using a third party program called near drop on my Mac so that I can use Android nearby share to send things wirelessly to my Mac. This is the front facing camera, which is not horrible until you zoom in a bit. Then you say like, yeah, it's kind of blurry. There's definitely some better post processing it can do, but I mean, it's not, not that bad. For some reason, this looks way better than the rear facing camera. Let me find a shot that was on that. Why does this phone keep auto shutting off? You have a giant battery life. You shouldn't be worried about this. Okay, let me, this is the last one I'll do. The actual size. Please send. I hit accept. Okay. We're in. St the night vision cameras can see through black bin trash bags. Well, I should try that. I don't have one, but okay. This is the rear facing camera, the 108 megapixel mode, and it's super blurry. Not much detail at all. Almost looks out of focus, to be honest with you. Maybe if it was on a tripod, it would look better, <laughs> but yeah, disappointed by the rear facing camera. Front facing cameras. Okay. Um, but people focused on impulse life experience moments could like this just need a tight cross bag. <laughs> I know you need, you need like uh to turn this into a backpack or something. This is the, the battery module that's going to power Apple reality pro, but I've got a lot of uh, playing around to do with this. So, uh, thanks for joining me on this bizarre journey. We're going to find the good, the bad and the real bad. Um, but yeah, this is, this is definitely weird. Anyway, appreciate you all for watching. Thank you for the super chats and your channel memberships. And uh, I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.